Hey, Banjophobic here, and uh, this is a companion video to the latest article about backup that I've written. And in this article, we're dealing with rolling backup, which tends to be a very popular topic. And I actually posted a thread on the Hangout asking for input as to what aspect of backup uh, that folks would like to see covered in this month's uh, newsletter. But um, rolling backup, the term kind of explains what it is. It's roles that are used as backup. So it's not really hard when you just listen to the description of the term. Uh, what rolling backup should be, but uh, if you read the article, hopefully you'll get some insight into where and why and how to play rolling backup. I didn't give you any examples in the article as far as tablets or anything. I thought I would just use the video time to do that. So uh, read the article and hopefully you'll get some insight into how to be tasteful and effective when using rolling backup. And the thing about backup that I always emphasize to my students especially is, you know, your backup always evolves, which means you change the backup to suit the situation you're in. Unlike a solo that you can memorize and you can play it the same way every time, anytime there's a spot allotted to take a solo, you can just have what I call a canned solo, which is something you've memorized. And obviously you get tired of doing the same exact solo every time and you want to improvise and improve it and do variations. But you can memorize one solo and play that the same way every time. But when you play with real people, like in a jam session, your backup will need to uh, be adaptable to each new musical situation you find yourself in because people won't sing or play songs the same way. You play with different people. As you evolve as a player, hopefully your skills as a backup player evolve with it so that you can fit in to any situation. So having said all that, let's just jump in some roles. I'll give you some good examples of uh, roles you might hear down low and again they're going to be forward roll based for the most part and if, if you read the article you see that any role is legal but forward rolls tend to be the go-to roll patterns because they provide that propulsive driving feel that all strokes players like. So I'll give you an example say 4-3-1 with a slide into 5-3-1 open is a common low position rolling backup pattern. <laughs> slide is kind of like what I call an introductory roll to the pattern. It gives it a little more push. And then you have 3-2-1 with a slide and you can slide from 2 to 3 for a bluesy effect or from 2 to 4 to get you know more of a major chord sound but it's 3-2-1 into 5-2-1 open. Two forward rolls that overlap. All right, then you have another pattern which is two one five, and it's very common in scrub style, especially to do a hammer or a slide from two to three and then hold that note and roll two one five. I'm going to do a slide this time. And as I talked about in the article, these things I'm doing the left hand, I call ornaments, slides, hammers. They just kind of add a little more oomph, a little drive, a little more pop, make notes pop. They just add some emphasis with the left hand. And of course you can you know, go to C and D and F, E minor, whatever the chords are in the song. You can string together rolls. And again, it's legal to use forward, backwards rolls, reverse rolls, whatever you like to call them, alternating thumb, backwards rolls, double thumb rolls. But you'll find that each one of those particular rolls has a certain kind of rhythm. And the one that's hard to quantify as far as that drive goes is a forward roll. There's something about a forward roll once you get it going that you kind of lose your place as a listener. You can't really tell what the order of the notes is and it has this push, this rhythmic kind of force behind it. So they should be your go-to patterns and then you can mix in other rolls when you need to. Now, uh, so we have limited time in the video so I'm going to kind of go as quickly as I can. Then you'll have rolls up the neck that include like F-shaped rolls, like 3-2-1 is a very common roll up the neck. 
often referred to as the in the mood roll from the uh, the old Miller Big Band song. And you can call these eighths or sixteenths depending on the time and signature, but that's just semantics. It doesn't really matter how you want to quantify them theoretically. Get the feel right, get the syncopation happening, get that good rhythmic pulse going, and don't worry about what duration they are. Now obviously since that's an F-shaped chord, you can repeat that roll anywhere. I'm, I'm not using the bass string yet, but I'm going to hold it just out of habit. Now you can add ornaments of the left hand to the up the neck rolls. It's really common to hear uh, good players slide into a chord shape, so they might replace one and two and three and four and if I call them sixteenths, or one and two and three and four and if I call them eights. But they'll they'll substitute a note or two of the roll with a slide in the position. And you don't always have to stay in the exact same sequence of notes. So you can stop in midstream. You can emphasize, say, the first string, but typically what you'll hear is dominance, dominance of forward rolls. Say maybe 70-75% of these backup rolls will be forward roll based with smatterings of other rolls mixed in. You'll have the inclusion of the fourth string, fifth string, third string. I mean, there's all kinds of variations, but most of the time they'll be forward roll driven with mixtures of other rolls. Like this time I'm doing four, one, five, two. And I'm including the fifth string at the same fret as the index because that's the blues note, that's the flatted seven, what we call the dominant seven note. It makes a seventh chord with the fifth string. And you can come to the third string as kind of a stopping point. Uh, you can also roll, you know, any of the rolls you know over the F shape, I mean the I'm sorry, the D shape position. Three, two, one also works here. And again you don't have to stay with the same sequence of notes. But all these are just examples of forward rolls that kind of drive behind a vocalist. So let me pick a song. Uh, I'm going to use Worried Man Blues, and I'm going to try to use some rolling back up and pretend you're playing this behind someone else singing. I'm going to sing the lead, but pretend like you're the backup banjo player and you're playing this behind the other singer. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man. include the open fifth in your roll patterns if you know that that note's going to be in harmony with a chord. Since I'm playing a G chord here, obviously a G note's going to be in harmony with it. A C chord has a G note in the chord itself, so, so you can include the fifth string open over any C chord because the, it's, it'll be part of the chord anyway. But when you're playing behind vocalists, as I talked about in the uh, article, try to stay away from the same range as the vocalist, it's a good idea to play opposites of the vocal range. So if the singer's singing low, you play high. When you're rolling, if, the, if it's say it's a female singer and she's singing really high, you want to stay away from that area and go down lower in the middle octave range. The banjo's only got about a two and a half, two and a half octave range that's usable. So, you know, you don't have a lot of room to go, but it's amazing how much different that is than that when you're rolling say something simple like three two one and when you're playing behind other instruments be careful that the notes you're playing don't uh, interfere with the other instruments uh, uh, range of notes like a mandolin player playing high you probably won't want to roll up there where the mandolin player is playing you want to roll low and there may be times when you don't want to roll at all behind the mandolin player because it sounds like you're competing with the mandolin players uh, back up. So again the main purpose is to make these rolls uh, drive the song. It's rhythm based. It's not about licks or anything. You're not trying to do anything to stand out but the rolls are there. They're filler and they provide that rhythmic push. Keeps things uh, rolling along 
uh, pardon my pun, but uh, use these licks, add a few ornaments with the left hand, but try not to go too crazy with hammers and pull-offs because when you're doing rolling back up and all of a sudden you're doing if you're doing a lot of that while you're rolling then it creeps into that territory of you're actively looking to play licks which when you're rolling back up you're not really looking to play licks at that point in time you're just trying to keep that rhythm going with the rolls and so be kind of uh, judicious about how many slides and hammers and pull-offs you put into a pattern when it's supposed to be rolling back up. Save a lot of that stuff for a little later if you're doing a lick uh, so that it stands out more. And uh, hopefully the article and video will um, shed some light on rolling back up. It's something you really need to spend a lot of time on because it's what you're going to be doing a lot of the time when you're not soloing. So when you play with other people, your main job is a backup banjo player anyway. And rolling back up is highly effective, and it's not as easy as it sounds because you want to get that solid tone out of your banjo. You want to get that drive, that propulsive feel, and you want make you want to make each note in the roll, you know, really good and fundamentally sound from a technical standpoint. So there's a lot going on, even though it seems simple, and you have to use this and this before you play rolls to make sure that what you're doing is complimentary to what people are playing around you and it serves the purpose that you want it to serve. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the article and uh, next time maybe we'll look at some more examples of uh, backup, maybe talk about backup licks. So look forward to seeing you in that article. Thanks for watching.